Hey guys, another uh, another installment of Driving at Home with the professor. I'm actually driving away from home, driving to the academy. Uh, it's Friday night, or I guess quarter to five on Friday. Uh, that doesn't quite matter because who knows when I'm going to upload this, but <clears throat> Memorial Day weekend. Anyway, I wanted to uh, discuss a question that I had received via Facebook from a very good friend of mine, uh, Crew Eric Carner. Uh, he's the owner of uh, Knock Moy Gym in uh, King of Prussia and also Chalfont, PA. Uh, extremely talented uh, Muay Thai fighter. Uh, he's fought and won in Thailand, but also uh, one of the best striking trainers that I've ever had uh, the pleasure of working with and currently work with uh, on a somewhat irregular basis just because he's too busy. But, um, and he's also a good friend. And he posted a, a question uh, in regards to what my feelings were on the changes in the, the uh, kind of people that we get uh, coming to our schools, uh, like pre-Ultimate Fighter and post-Ultimate Fighter, and, and kind of what are some of the traits that I see um, successful fighters that I've helped uh, have, uh, what kind of successful traits do they have that are kind of, uh, you know, a common trait. So some of the, the kind of changes that I see in the, the, the guys that we get and the girls that we get um, pre-Ultimate Fighter as opposed to post-Ultimate Fighter, uh, and we're talking about the Ultimate Fighter, you know, when it, when it first started, not the, the current iteration, but I've, I've actually known a few people and been friends with a few uh, people that have been on the Ultimate Fighter. Um, I digress. So... Some of the differences, right? So uh, before you'd get a guy that was a UFC fan and he wanted to do what he saw Hoist Gracie or Ken Shamrock or uh, Mark Coleman and he thought he could kind of do it and maybe not so much thinking about fighting because he didn't think fighting was attainable or reachable, uh, but he wanted to train uh, maybe he was a former wrestler or a karate guy or a kickboxer and he wanted to kind of round out his, uh, his martial arts experience. Uh, after the Ultimate Fighter, I think what we got a chance to see from people coming through our doors is people that came in wanting to fight, uh, feeling like if they had the chance, they can make it to the UFC uh, and, and those kinds of things. So I think that's the big, the big difference in kind of the texture of the, the people that we're getting. Just because back then, uh, pre ultimate fighter there weren't that many local events there wasn't kind of opportunities for a lot of guys to pursue a fighting career and after the ultimate fighter man MMA schools started popping up jiu-jitsu schools kickboxing schools you know all the all the requisite arts that uh, are necessary for being a successful mixed martial artist were, were popping up and you know continue to pop up everywhere so from that standpoint, I think that we were getting less of a competition-minded student um, before the Ultimate Fighter, and now we're getting students that walk in the door, and one of the first things that they're saying is, hey, I want to fight. Whereas before, yeah, if they fought or it happened, it was kind of just a progression of their training and you know where the coaches thought they were, but we're definitely getting people through the door who right out of the gate say, one of my goals is wanting to fight. And, you know, how do we know that? Well, we ask people, what are your goals? What are you looking to accomplish? And, you know, I could tangibly go back uh, over the years and, and see that changing as the UFC and shows like The Ultimate Fighter have become a lot more popular. So to, to me, that's a big, the biggest difference uh, in like pre and post Ultimate Fighter. And then and even further than that, like back in the early days when I got involved in uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Judo back uh, at around UFC number two, which is now is amazingly years and years ago, uh, man, it was just guys that were amazed of what they were seeing in the cage, and they wanted to train in the same style that Hoist Gracie was training in. Uh, and I was lucky enough to have uh, a school uh, in Center City, Philadelphia, which wasn't far from my home, that I could go do this with uh, a lot of like-minded people. So now, uh, let's talk about some traits of some of the successful uh, mixed martial arts fighters that, that I've helped. Uh, I'm not going to name names, but 
what I will say is this, is that uh, the, the best fighters, and I don't even, I didn't say the best, but the, the guys that are always able to um, step up to the challenge, and I've seen quite a few guys come through my gym, and I've seen quite a few guys not be able to kind of take this torch, but it's mental strength. You know, uh, mental strength is probably one of the biggest and most common qualities that I'll, I see in successful mixed martial arts fighters that, that I help, that I have helped and, and continue to help. And uh, I have helped some guys in the past that haven't been so mentally strong. Uh, I'd actually say they were mentally weak. Um, but the guys that, that do the best and that I enjoy helping the most and are the, the least difficult to, um, to help are the guys with that, man, innate mental, uh, mental strength. You know, when you have to continually coddle and tell a guy he's great, you know, I, I look at it as like, it's like brushing a thoroughbred. You, you know, I say, oh, I always got to take care of this thoroughbred horse and, you know, I don't know what's going to set it off and if training's going to be good today and where this person's mindset is. Then I have other guys, man, it doesn't matter. They all, they know all their job is, is to show up and do what the coaches tell them to do, do it as hard as they can do it, do it as fast as they can do it, do it as well as they can do it, and then when practice is over, they go home because they know that the, the goal isn't the near term, the goal is the long term, that fight and getting that win. So uh, I think the best quality of, of the successful fighters and you know the most common quality of successful fighters that I've ever worked with is mental toughness. You know, guys not breaking in practice, not breaking in fights, um, not needing to be cajoled, I don't know if cajoled is the right word, but not needing to be coddled and kind of treated like children. You know, these guys that are these, you know, these warriors are, are men and, and men to the greatest example. And, you know, even some of the women that we've helped have, have showed a lot of mental strength. Um, so to answer Eric's question, mental strength by far, uh, because it makes my job a lot easier. Maybe we could get through the physical uh, it's being able to crack that mental aspect of it that some guys, um, you know, have a tough time. So hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed the, the truth in those answers. Uh, if you guys have uh, any more questions, feel free to send me on Twitter at Team NJMA. Hit me up on Facebook, Marco Perrazzo, or check me out online at our website, njmaonline.com. And I hope you guys enjoy your weekend.